with Nikki and Emoji. The tea, the tea, the tea, the time, the truth, the talk. From the heart of the Queen City, Emoji Nightmare and Nikki Champagne. This is the tea. Welcome to the tea. Two queens bringing together arts and activism. I'm Nikki Champagne, and I am Emoji Nightmare. <laughs> We have an exciting lineup of guests today for discussion on all things arts and activism. We have talking about their drag persona and inspiration. Abadravia Palang. Wonderful pronunciation. <laughs> Thanks, I tried. I don't know. I guess I she'll correct us when she, she we'll, gets in we'll here. We'll figure this out. <laughs> and we have the boys taking grinder and bringing it to the streets, the Glam Boys. <laughs> And a woman's place is in the House and the Senate. We have <laughs> former legislator Keisha Rahm. Whew, what a lineup. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. Welcome, this is so fun. This, this is, tea. Yeah, this is our <laughs> debut episode. We are making it live. Yes. Uh, All right, what'd you do this weekend? Well, we went to the Pride Center in Vermont, we 19th annual awards and celebration, um, where we got to see most of our guests there, actually, and <laughs> eat delicious food. Oh my gosh, it was oh. so good. Uh, Lunigs knows how to. Make and a catering spread. by Dale. They were Yum. both there? Oh, yeah. I didn't I even think, know. I think he had the jalapeno popper that <laughs> popped in. I do not do spicy. No. That was a disaster. But delicious. The dessert delicious. bar. I don't know who oh. is responsible for the dessert bar, but oh mm. my goodness. Mm -hmm. Salted caramel and chocolate. Mm. <laughs> and then like Get that, it, and like mousse. I am a, I'm just a queen after a mousse. And we also have to highlight that photo booth with Karen Pike Photography. Thank you for such all the fabulous photos. And the photographer was so cute. Yes. Oh Bring him to every event, please. please. And send us his number. Yeah. Send him to the tea. Yeah, we'd love to have him on our couch. <laughs> <laughs> we met Susan Hartman. Yeah, the new executive director. She was a doll all the way from Arkansas. She had like just driven up like that day, it sounded like. She was mm -hmm. like, I just got in my car and I went 1,500 miles in my car. And <laughs> that was, <laughs> that's my, <laughs> I can't wait till she comes on the show so we can see how well that accent really was. Perfect. Um, Yeah, she was a doll. We got a picture with her too. So. Mm -hmm. And there were Mer queers. It was great. There's a lot of bidding that we did not do because we were too focused on the food. No, but like I talked to my friend Ellen and she was like, they were just like doling out the money, those bidders. They made a lot of money. Wow. Yeah. Wait, because they did a silent auction and a live, live auction. Off. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The live auction was amazing. Everything was going okay. for like. Big, big, big money. Thousands. Great. Thousands. Yeah. Yeah. What else well, did you do? What else did I do? I went green upping because we love Ooh. to keep the trash off the streets. That's why we have them here on our couch. Is that a good segue for our first guest? <laughs> yeah, I'm bringing the trash from the streets to our couch. Yes. <laughs> I guess that's one way to introduce her. So we have local queen and makeup artist. I'm not even going to try to pronounce the name oh, because Emoji oh, did such a great job. Abradavia Plank. Yay! How do we do? Hey there. Good. How are you doing? <laughs> Wonderful. And how is our pronunciation today? Uh, it's a little bad. It needs some work. <laughs> okay, but girl. We can, can work on that. So for the audience, can you give us a good pronunciation? So it's Abadaravia Palang. Oh. Abadaravia Palang. Palang. Oh, I think this I have is, it. This is like hooked on phonics it for is. queens. There you go. <laughs> Thank you. And <laughs> so where did you get your drag name from? <clears throat> um, so I recently became a piercing apprentice at Body Art Tattoo on Main Street. Um, and uh, my, re uh, my previous drag name was Alice Bovinsky. Um, I had previously quit doing drag due to some personal issues. Um, and then I decided to do drag again. So I picked my name based off of two piercings. Um, an abadaravia is a vertical piercing through the head of the penis, and a palang is a horizontal piercing through the head of the penis. So it's pretty fitting. So I oh. see it, there's a focus there as yeah, to where the piercings are. Exactly. Hmm. Do they call it a Princess Albert as well? No, that's through the urethra through the bottom. The oh. 
Oh my goodness. I kind of gross looking. Trigger. I don't think I, I don't think I want to <laughs> see a penis me. that has like just like a bunch of like Jenga sticks. Jenga sticks? No, you know that like little game that used to play where oh, you put the, the with the marbles. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh-huh. Like that's what it would look like, no? I would say and more like a tackle too. box, you know? Oh, oh a tackle box. <laughs> Emoji a knows warrior. all about the tackle box. I bet box. you do. I keep my makeup in the fishing tackle box. <laughs> <laughs> so have you done an opera davia or a polang before? I've never done either of those two piercings yet. No. Okay, so Burlington, if you want to... Get your penis get pierced. Get that happened to you. <laughs> that was great English. <laughs> get that <laughs> happened to you. You know where to go. Body, what is it? Body art. Body art. Street. Street. All right. Yeah. Please. So let's focus back in on drag. Okay. How did you get interested in drag in the first place? You talked about Alice and now Apadravia. Um, I started when I was in the army. I was a medic. I met my Ooh. drag sister. Um, we went to dinner one night and they were like, we're going to play with some makeup. What do you think? You want to come over? And they did my makeup and went to my first drag show in Atlanta. And I started doing drag almost four years ago. So just been kind of transforming and learning as I go. Wow. So you grew, did you grow up in Atlanta? I did not. I was born in Kentucky and then I lived in Georgia for seven years and then I moved up here three years ago. Oh my gosh. It's a lot (laughs) different up here. I feel like the, I've never been to Kentucky, but like. Eat. It's a little redneck, yeah. you know. Mm-hmm. Valentine's Day is marry your cousin day, so. <laughs> um, or maybe it's Tennessee. I don't know. We're all in. I bread. think they both. I think they both share. I think they both share Probably, that holiday. Yeah. Yeah. Do well, they get it off? Do the state employees get that holiday off? I don't know. <laughs> I wouldn't know. Everyone's gonna be busy going to the church, Probably. Probably so. It would make I hope sense. so. Yes. Seeking repentance, girl. <laughs> <laughs> so you were in two different drag scenes then, Atlanta yes. and here. Compare, uh, contrast, let us know. So I was in Columbus, Georgia. Um, I went to Atlanta a couple times, uh, but not really to perform. Just I went a couple times in drag. Um, but I performed in Columbus. The drag scene was a little smaller there. We did have a gay club, but it closed down because business wasn't very good. Um, so I wasn't really doing drag that often. And then I moved up here, and I did Drag Idol with you. Yeah. Um, and you won, obviously. <laughs> Bitch. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> um, the, the drag scene's a lot different up here. I feel like maybe some of the southern queens are a little bit more catty in some aspects. But I don't know, that bitch emoji, like, you know. <laughs> her I her like alone. I know, I'm the meanest one. I know. Yeah. <laughs> um, speaking of mean queens, did you, have any, <laughs> did you have any difficulties like breaking into the drag scene or was it like, were you like welcomed with open arms? Um, I mean, I had my drag sister in Georgia. Um, that I mean, and then she had her. She didn't have a drag mother. She has like a drag grandmother. Um, and then moving here, um, I didn't really have a family, so I guess I felt a little outcast compared to everybody else. But that was fine with me. I feel like there's a lot of drama when there's a drag family kind of deal going on. Preach, girl. So <laughs> I'm good, just kind of being my own little entity right now. So. Independent. But I do, yeah. but I do have a drag daughter now. So. Ooh, tell name, us more. Uh, her name is Princess Arcadia. Uh, she actually. Oh, that's such a cute name. Yeah. She actually drove me here today. Um, she, she a driver. She my driver girl. <laughs> I need a chauffeur. Okay? I was thinking I need one. I was doing my eyebrows in the car the other day, gluing them down. I was like, this would be really convenient if I could just afford a driver. Well, <laughs> one um, day, one day goals. She has the pickup truck, oh and I need to lay my big self down because I couldn't breathe <laughs> in the back, in the, in the bed, in the front, girl. <laughs> But I, maybe on the way back in the bed. Just Ooh, let the no. air out. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. You gotta air some things out after this. Yes, you yeah. do. Oh, girl. Can I you imagine do? that car that's behind you at the red light when you just spring up? <laughs> I hope they get really excited like I do. Mm. Mm. So, where did she get her name from? Did you we'll get have to have her on, on. Princess Arcadia. Um, I think the Arcadia part is kind of based off of the fact that she likes video games. Oh. So, a was, gamer. Yeah. Geeky queen. With a Y. Yeah, gamer. G- gamer. 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 <laughs> yes. Um, and she's kind of a little princess, so. Oh, wow. That's awesome that you have a little little baby princess under your wing. Yeah, she's great. I love her. That's awesome. So is That's she like fun. a mini you or a whole new persona? Definitely a whole new persona, for sure. Oh. Is she going to perform at Vermont Track Idol? I hope so. Are you going to push her off the stage, get her onto the stage oh. rather than off the stage? Don't push her off. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm trying to convince her. Uh, yeah. She wants to perform a couple times before we. Yeah. 
try to aim for a drag idol this year. So. Yeah. So are you going to stage mom it, like <clears throat> yeah. Mean Girl style, in the background with the camera? Obviously. Oh, girl. With the big video camera, too, girl. <laughs> oh, doing it up to the nine. Yeah. With a VHS tape. Yeah. Like one of those ones. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> cool. So when everyone's getting into drag, we all have our inspirations. Who inspired you when you were getting in? Oh, that's a really tough question. Um, I mean, I would say my drag sister, definitely. Um, just doing drag gave me a lot of confidence that I never had. And um, him growing up, you know, being, you know, he came from Mexico, um, you know, learning to speak English and, you know, being gay as well. I find that really inspirational that he was able to, you know, kind of conquer through that. And I learned a lot about him, about how to love yourself and be confident no matter what. Wow. That's a... Beautiful story. Oh, like thank touched you. over here. We need a Kleenex for Nicole. Yes, please. <laughs> TD. <laughs> um, yeah, what's your favorite? Like, so I've seen you perform so many times and you were like a badass bitch. So, like, what is your favorite? <clears throat> I've seen you do this, like, correct me if I'm wrong, with like sort of a like snow. Was it a snow? It wasn't a snow white. It was like a. The um, evil queen. The, the evil snow queen. White. Okay, so it was. Yeah, I love That's what I did for uh, Drag Idol. That's right. Yeah. You did it again, though. I feel like I saw it at higher ground at one point. I don't think I did it. Okay, maybe you did. Maybe I'm in that. I was both at both things. <laughs> I usually I've been just, I've been, yeah, I, I've been everywhere. I've been I got this. I usually try to do something different for all my performances. Yeah. So do you have a favorite one that just like? <laughs> um, um, I would probably say the Vanity with the Evil Queen from Snow White. My drag sister also did that song, so I found a lot of inspiration in my costume and my song choice. That costume was slay. I still Yay. have a girl. Woo. Woo. Are we gonna see it again? Or was that like, or was that like a Alice? You'll Bobbins probably see it thing? again. I'll, re I'll revamp. Is there it a is there a bit. clear like difference between <clears throat> your two? Like, you put Alice to rest. Um, the reason I picked Alice Bovinsky was because of my family, um, and I haven't received a lot of support from them. Um, you know, they really pushed me to go to cosmetology school and get my license, and then they told me that. You only do your makeup and you know post your photos and do your live videos because you seek attention and you need validation from people. And I don't need people to tell me that I'm talented. I'm no, I'm talented, girl. So, <laughs> yes. um, so I wanted to put away that that old name just because I picked it because of my family, and I don't really want to have anything to do with that if they're going to be negative about it. So, so same queen, just changing it up. Yeah, just trying to vamp it up a little bit. I mean, I might try to redo my style a little bit and. We'll see how it goes. So. Well, we are so excited to see Thank this you. I'm transformation in progress. Thank you. Um, and just some like parting words. If there was a drag queen in the <clears> area <throat> who was looking to get into the scene, what is some advice that you would have really appreciated when you were coming in? Um, stay away from color with eyeshadow. No. <laughs> um, is that a read? <laughs> No, I know that when I started, I like to use like a lot of blues and greens and like not any black. And Some like grandma uh, colors. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Um, but I would say, um, you know, if you need help, like ask for help. There are so many queens here in town. Like they're gonna help you if you ask. Like there's no reason to bring each other down. We're all in the same family, so. Absolutely. No reason to be a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if you want to, come see me. Unless you're a bitch. Because <laughs> <That's right. laughs> they'll look less bitchy, more bitchy next to you. Both. Oh, whoa. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, thank you so much for thank coming. Thank you. You're for our first guest ever. Thank you for having me. Thank you. All right. Awesome. Well, wasn't she just a lovely queen? She's like, amazing. We are so lucky to have her as our first guest I on love the her. team. She's great. But I'm more excited for our next <laughs> guests who are coming up. <laughs> The Glam Boys! Ah! Uh, <laughs> so who do we have with us today? Um, well, my name is Carlos. I am a health and wellness coordinator for the President of Vermont, and I'm also a Glam coordinator. Um, and I'm Travis. I'm also a health and wellness and Glam coordinator. And we brought some gifts for you two lovely ladies. Yes. Because you can't have so tea excited. without shade. Ah! Ah! So shade queen. Queen. Oh my gosh. Glam shade. We, we, yeah, we got our tchotchkes ah, out. Summer's coming that. up. Oh, product <laughs> placement. <laughs> and stickers. Oh, okay. okay. I, you guess, can, I guess I, I'm alone. You can wear them. <laughs> I, they're adorable. I love this. Glam. Mm -hmm. Oh, you even have your website. Yeah. Glambt.org. Plug yes. it. I'm going to set oh. it there with the nail that popped off. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> cute. It happens. <laughs> oh. So, for those who don't know, like, what is glam? 
So GLAM is a social group for gay, bi, and trans guys. Um, we host a slew of social events throughout the area. Um, and summer typically picks up a lot more because it's nice outside and we don't have to worry about winter. Snow. So we've Snow. got <laughs> glamping, which is just camping with a little glam twist. Mm -hmm. um, we go to the great... Like glitter? Yeah, glitter. Oh, there's all always the glitter. <laughs> always always glitter. glitter. Yeah. Um, we go to the Great Escape Six Flags in Lake George. Um, so that's always fun. Uh, we do hiking because what kind of group would we be in Vermont if we didn't hike, right? Um, so yeah, that's a little bit about GLAM. We, we try and incorporate guys um, 18 to 35. Um, the typical empowerment project, which is what GLAM is, is 18 to 24, but we modified ours because more people, more fun. You know, <laughs> always. Um, and there's also an HIV prevention component to GLAM, um, which pe people don't see, but um, let's say, for example, we put like, uh, we're gonna have a sex chat discussion of like safer sex and in a clinic. A lot of people are not gonna go in, so um, studies shows that it is easier for people to get comfortable when talking about this stuff when they're talk about when they're talking to peers. So we do these events to gather people and then invite them to this uh, safer sex discussions. Uh, in which we talk about risk reduction. Like it's not always about like safe, it's not always about like putting on a condom. There's a lot of other things that you can do, um, like abstinence. <laughs> 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 right? that's, that's exactly what they were going for, right? <laughs> like yeah. swallowing, actually. It's oh. <laughs> uh, I don't think that's a lot in my diet. Too many calories, <laughs> too much protein. Um, yeah, <laughs> but 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 yeah. So we gather uh, guys to um, talk about uh, this uh, as friends instead of. Like just instead of educators, um, just ask friends, uh, and we create educators uh, that way. And we also uh, do HIV uh, testing, so that's another way of like getting people in. It's like it's okay, you can just like take a test, it's twenty minutes. So awesome. So HIV testing, are we talking like you're going to stick a needle in my arm and I have to give you a bunch of blood, or...? Because we know, <laughs> we know this is an issue where I'm like, no needles, no needles. Bitch, my blood is my own. Oh. <laughs> I'm not giving that to anyone. So we can collect the sample two different ways. Uh, we can collect um, oral fluid, so you can just like put something in your mouth. Oral fluid. <laughs> Uh, and then we can collect it that way, or we can do a finger prick uh, and just like take a tiny drop of blood from your finger. Oh, yes. just, a little, just a little tiny prick. Just a little tiny. Uh, mm. bitty. I don't really do so well with tiny pricks. <laughs> 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 so it's fine, I'll just stick something in your mouth. I love it. <laughs> There's always a prick in one group of big guys, right? <laughs> <laughs> At least one. <laughs> Um, what do we have like on tap for events for GLAM? On like tap. On tap. Mm, we've got a lot. Um, so let's see, we have, what, what is the day? It's, it's Well, we're mid premiering on Tuesday. <laughs> it's Tuesday. <laughs> um, so we've got mini golf coming up next weekend. We've got the weekend after, we're going to the drive-ins. Yes. Um, and that same day that we're doing mini golf is the transplant cell. So the transplant cell is going to be happening in the parking lot right next to the Pride Center. It's going to be put on by our trans group and it's going to be a lot of great stuff. Um, it's all going to be volunteer run and all the proceeds go to the trans support groups which are going to be great. And at the annual celebration on Friday, we raised $1,000 for that program. Awesome. Well, for that program's Specific. new coordinator. Okay. So we're opening up a position for a trans program coordinator. Ooh, yeah, that's super exciting. exciting. Yeah. Keep your eyes peeled if you're looking for a so job. Where, so where is that? So for folks who don't know where the Pride Center is, so the that Pride parking lot is yeah. located. Wow. The Pride Center is at the end of South Champlain Street. Um, Suite 12, it's going to be the first door on the red building, very close. It'll be very easy to find. We got rainbows everywhere. If you want to put it on, <laughs> on your UPS, rainbow. it's 255 South Champlain Street. 255 Perfect. South Champlain Street. Um, one real quick thing um, about like events that are coming yeah. up. We have uh, a few like bigger events uh, that attract more people. Um, one of them is the Great Escape. We usually go to the Great Escape as a group. Um, so that's really awesome, always. Um, we also have glamping coming up. Uh, 
that we usually do that at the end of the summer. And really important, we have this really big event in a boat. <laughs> Boat. Uh, oh, yes. Fast. <laughs> <laughs> Is it going real fast? <laughs> <laughs> so um, yeah, at the annual celebration, we raised some money uh, to rent this boat, and this boat is going to have three levels, and I believe uh, it's going to be divided by the trans community program, the momentum program, which is for older adults, and then glam program is going to be there too. We're going to have DJs. I think we uh, don't quote me on this, but <laughs> DJ Chia, <laughs> DJ Chia is, uh, is on board, and I. I believe uh, Craig Mitchell yeah. is like we're trying to get Craig Mitchell, maybe Rob Douglas. Who knows? I we're really excited for this. Yeah. So yeah, that's coming up. Yeah. Stay tuned. And thanks to all the wonderful contributions made, ticket sales will be super super low. Yay. So yeah. come by. We're gonna try and broadcast it all yeah. through Vermont and maybe even upstate New York. Who knows? We're just gonna try and fill the thing because we've got an entire freaking boat to ourselves. So, so everyone's that's invited. This everyone's yeah. invited. This yeah. summer, just no date yet. Not yeah, yet. exactly. Okay. We're working no on that. Day. It's just again, thanks to those amazing. We raised upwards of twenty two hundred dollars for that. Wow! Yeah. So it covered all the rental fees for all three floors. So, mm. so you just have to like stay tuned to like the Glam News, GlamVT.org, mm. right here. Check <laughs> your glasses. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Cool. Yeah. Well, wow. uh, glam just sounds like a bucket of fun. <laughs> what <laughs> got both of you interested in glam to begin with? Oh, so yeah. um, for me, I they got me as soon as I moved to to town. Like I moved to town on a Wednesday, and they were like Wednesday. Uh, um, Mike Benzel, who's the, uh, the director of the program, he uh, talked to me through the apps, and he was like, "Hey, I see you, you're new. There's this, there's this thing. The apps, <laughs> scruff. There's this thing." <laughs> There's this thing happening on Wednesday. If you want to come, we do event planning. Uh, there's always food. And I was like, OK, sure, I'll check it out. Um, so I went there my first day um, in Burlington. And I just found a lot of like really good friends. I was ta just talking with one of my great friends, Ethan Fontenot. Uh, and he was like, oh, I just met you the first day you came here through ground. I was like, yeah, that's right. That's amazing. Um, so yeah. And after that, I I was just like, I really want to get involved. And when a position opened, I was like, might as well just check it out. And mm -hmm. here I am. <laughs> yeah. Unfortunately, I didn't. I don't get quite as an exciting star. I didn't get to use the apps. I mean, I still <laughs> use them. <but laughs> you didn't I, get that like initiation. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I didn't get that. Uh, but um, I moved here last May actually, and um, I heard that there was going to be some like poster making for the vigil going on in response to the Pulse incident. And I'm glad that I, I just kind of like jumped right in with that. And everyone was there so welcoming. Uh, Carlos was there. Um, I'm pretty sure Ethan was. And it was great. They just you know said, come on in. Like, we're going to do this. And you know we just made posters and went out on the streets the day, same day. Um, it felt great. It felt very welcoming. And after that, I just kind of like started doing my own digging. Um, and I went to a beach event. There's a beach party that we have every year too. Oh yeah, um, That's which also is a, coming up, which is so much fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh yeah. So keep your eyes peeled for that. Busy summer. Yeah, plug in Queens yeah. over here. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But um, that beach event was super fun because obviously it was at a beach, but there was a storm, and I wound up walking away with a new grill. That's so, right. <laughs> new grill. Um, yeah. Um, and How then much? I just kept getting more and more involved, and eventually a position opened up, and I. Um, dove right in and got my foot in the door there. So awesome! <laughs> so I heard a little name drop there, Mike Benzel. Mike Benzel. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so where is he today? <laughs> Mike Benzel. Who knows where Mike Benzel is? He might be riding his bike. Yeah, he's, he's I wonder everywhere. where he can be. <laughs> I mean, we're loosely based off of the Sherry and Yolanda show, and back in the '90s, he was able to go on there. Oh. But I just, I just saw a video of Baby Mike in '98 <laughs> oh talking God. about the Prize yeah. Center because he was actually one of the uh, original like founders of the 
of the prize center, which at that point was called Are You One Too? Um, so yeah, check it out. This is, it's on YouTube. It yeah. is. If you go yeah, to the if you go to uh, VermontCam.org, you can go yeah. to the Cherry and Yolanda yeah. archives and check out Mike's uh, original interview yeah. back in the day. And if you needed any help with some nineties fashion, you can make sure you can check that out too because yeah. soccer shirts <laughs> over thermals with rainbow scarves and an eyebrow ring yeah. were the hottest trend. He so looks sickening. If you ever need Shining. an idea for a nineties party. <laughs> <clears throat> awesome. We should do a toot and boot. <laughs> <laughs> toot and boot from the 90s. Yes. Yes. I love yes. that idea. So I know we've had plenty of plugging of events, but mm -hmm. if someone was interested in joining in GLAM, like, how can they get involved? How do they get involved? You show up at the Pride Center <laughs> on Wednesday at 6.30. We have our core group meetings every Wednesday. Uh, we always have food, and mm. it's free. Yeah. So if you like food, and we have a lot, we have variety too. Like mm -hmm. we used to have only like uh, pizza, you know, the things that you could like deliver, get delivered. But now we have Travis here and he's the great mm -hmm. cook. So, <laughs> so we actually- you stepped it up. Yeah, mm -hmm. we actually had tacos, beef stroganoff. Beef stroganoff, tacos, yeah. subs. Um, Looking for my subs. dating show. <laughs> <laughs> I should do a cooking. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so yeah, just show up on Wednesday nights. Uh, we have a group of anywhere from like five to 12 guys. Sometimes we filled the entire barn, which is a big community space out back in the Pride Center. So everyone there is great. We do um, obviously introductions and who doesn't love a good icebreaker? No. Um, and then we get talking about um, future events. Uh, we have a discussion topic that ranges from, you know, your favorite, great. favorite yeah. colors, food, places to eat in Burlington to a lot more in depth things like uh, positive queer masculinity, um, and any labels, label stereotypes. identities, stereotypes, all the good stuff. Um, mm. And then we talk about future events that glam guys want to see. So mm. the coolest part about glam and the events that we have, it's not determined by Carlos Mike or I, it's determined by the people in the community. Whatever you want to see, we can help you put on. Yeah. Okay. Also, another way that you can get involved is um, you can talk to me or Mike and we can organize, you can organize your own testing uh, party in which you, you can, we bring food to your house, you just, you're just the host, but we bring the food and Mike and I will be, hopefully soon Travis too, <laughs> um, uh, we'll be in like a room and we'll just be testing people, uh, but we're like, yeah, we'll bring like food and drinks and everything, mm -hmm. so. And do we ask through Scruff, Grinder? Like, <laughs> what is the preferred app that we do this How through? How do you see our faces? <laughs> I am on all the apps, so you can find me on all, all the, the apps, Scruff, Growler, <laughs> Grinder. Um, and I'm always willing to talk to people about the program and about, you know, like risk reduction and how you can get involved. So, yeah, you can reach me like anywhere. Yeah. Awesome. Um, yeah. Well, we are so thankful that we got to have you on our first show. Yeah, thank you so you much. Oh, yes, thank you for having us. Yeah. Carlos and Travis from Glam. <laughs> thank, thank you. you. <sighs> wow, so we had the Glam Boys. And we have a I'm busy summer. We have a busy summer if, if we're going to all of those Glam events. Every single one. And oh I'm gosh. sorry that I limited them earlier to just Grinder, like Scruff, <laughs> uh, Hornet, all of them. God. And you can't say, none of these gays in this area can say that there's nothing to do in Vermont because the Glam Boys are making it happen. They're doing everything. Yeah. Every single thing. Well, Let's switch it to women, because I always <laughs> love talking about women in politics. And speaking about that, we have Keisha Ron here today. Um, so Keisha is a University of Vermont alum, as well as a former Vermont legislator, and is a founding member of Emerge Vermont, which recently had a gala and aims to change the face of Vermont politics by identifying, training, and inspiring women of all backgrounds to pursue politics or public office, just in general. So welcome, Keisha. Thank you so much for having me. It's great to be here. Well, it's wonderful to have you. Yeah. This is a really historic show as well. I was just watching a clip from the Sherry and Yolanda show in the 90s and just thinking how much we've come full circle and your makeup looks great, everything looks <laughs> great, but also um, I'm just honored to be your guest. On our you, first episode. Yay. And you are working those bonus points. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah. You did bring us a gift, but you did bring us like a compliment. So yeah. it's like that's a gift in itself. And right, flattery yeah. will get you everywhere. You know. Everywhere. <laughs> There's plenty of room on that couch. <laughs> so for those who don't know, how did you initially get into politics? 
Yeah, so, uh, you know, sometimes I go back to fifth grade when there were no girls running for student council president, and I thought that was a huge tragedy, and ran and won. Uh, but fast forward many years, uh, I was student body president at the University of Vermont, and in fact, I'm only the seventh woman in the 75-year history of the student government to be president of the UVM SGA. Really? And a lot of men asked me to be their vice presidential candidate, and I said, well, I think I'd be really great at being president, <laughs> and you could be my vice president if you'd like. Uh, and the rest is sort of history. I learned a lot from that experience about what it feels like to be uh, a woman in politics. There's a difference in how you're treated and perceived, um, how people might approach your leadership. And um, I started to feel like I could use a lot of support. And I reached out to women like Governor Madeline Kunin and a friend of mine who uh, had been the graduate student senate president and run for the legislature, Rachel Weston. And uh, they incurred, they said, look, you're student body president, you teach preschool locally, you're on a number of boards and commissions, you may not realize this, but you're qualified to run for the legislature. And that's one of the biggest barriers women often face, is not feeling qualified enough to run for something. Wow. And so I'm guessing this leads into Emerge Vermont, which you are a founding member alongside Madeline Kunin. That's right. And you started in her living room. That's right. So uh, I had been in the legislature by then three years or so. And in fact, you'll love this story. When I first went to meet with Governor Kunin about running for the legislature, I was 21. And I don't know what possessed me, but I showed up to her office in a hoodie, jeans, and flip flops. This was to meet with a former governor of the state, an incredibly fabulous, elegant woman. And uh, she was very kind to me and generous and even offered to endorse me wearing a hoodie and jeans. Um, and a couple of years later, she came to the State House. I was in a skirt suit, and she leaned over and she said, you clean up very nicely. <laughs> she was very gracious to me, but that's one of the many reasons we thought we needed Emerge Vermont, is because young women or women of all stripes and backgrounds don't really know uh, what it's like to dress like you're gonna run for office, to speak and act like you're ready to run for office. So Governor Kunin had traveled to California to speak at Emerge California, one of the first Emerge America organizations and came back and said, we need something longer than Emily's List, which is a couple day training, or you know, just an afternoon for ready to run. We need a program that's months long and really gets women who are committed to running. And uh, so far we've had almost 100 women go through the program, 13 women run for office, and many of those women be successful, including uh, the Senate uh, Majority Leader, Becca Ballant, in the Vermont State Senate. Awesome. And the House Majority Leader is also a female, correct? The House Majority Leader, Joe Krowinski, is yeah. on our advisory council, was also in Governor Kunin's living room when we started the organization. <laughs> so we're a force to be reckoned with, and we're three years in. That's amazing. It is. And it seems like there can there's a lot getting done in one living room. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and you know, I think sometimes it's important to take a step back and think about why is it important for women to be in government at all? And I'm often speaking to other young women who look at the political battlegrounds and see a lot of mudslinging and don't think there's a real place for them. They don't want to be attacked publicly. And I try to remind them that they have to look at it just through the numbers, that of all the elected officials in the country, less than 5% are under the age of 35. And of that 5%, about a quarter, so 1.5% of that total, are women under the age of 35. Now guess who gets to Congress and makes a lot of laws about young women's bodies? There's a huge bottleneck of people who make it to Congress. They started in politics under the age of 35, over half of them, and most of them are white, Christian, and male. And who do they like to make laws about? Young women and their bodies. And so if we don't start women running and thinking about their own capacity to serve at the school board, the city council, the board of alder people, uh, and then make it all the way to the legislature and Congress and beyond, we will never have that pipeline to finally break the glass ceiling. So besides just the, um, you know, 
maybe people feeling that they're not qualified enough to run? Yeah. What else is kind of restricting them? That's a great question. Women are just have different expectations set up for them in society. If you're a man who has young kids, nobody is asking you every day, oh, how are your kids doing and are they going to be okay without you? You know, even Sue Minter running for governor with one uh, student in high school and one who was in college was asked, is this okay for your kids? You know, and they're grown people. So uh, women often have this double standard in terms of what are they neglecting at home to run for office. Another barrier they face is also fundraising. Um, a lot of people are very encouraging of women to run, but they don't open their checkbooks as much as men open their checkbooks for other men. So that emerges also not just trying to help women run, but create that culture of women supporting other women. I feel like, um, you know, sort of when Sue ran for governor and you ran for lieutenant governor last summer, um, you didn't seem to have too hard of a time fundraising. You kept up with, you know, um, the other people who were running. That's right. Um, and so was that, do you think, partially thanks to Emerge or? The, the attitude has entirely changed between Emily's List, Emerge, and a number of other organizations. I think that's a really astute point. And it, it also makes us have to rethink what those barriers are for women, right? Because mm -hmm. Hillary Clinton, for example, spent $1.4 billion running for president and couldn't break through a lot of different barriers, including a big layer of misogyny, you know, that was, was overlaying the, the whole entire experience. So. Um, we still do have a culture that has to change and see women as executive leaders. And I think regardless of how much money we raise, that will still be a barrier. But you're right, we're getting a lot more women and men, great men, to think about uh, supporting women. And you know, I remember <laughs> you giving me uh, your, your big check from your <laughs> campaign account. Um, and so you know, I just think it's going to take all kinds of folks supporting women candidates. Not yes. that you're a size queen, but like <laughs> she just wanted to focus on that it was a, a, a large check for you. Yeah. Large. Well, I think I think the biggest thing too um, that I noticed last summer was um, how they were, the media always seemed kind of surprised that you know yourself and Sue were doing so well with fundraising. Right. And I, that always kind of like you know what what role does the media have in all of this as well? That's a great question. I think we're all still unpacking it just from the election. And then we're dealing with the shell shock of the health care bill that just passed the House, uh, the U.S. House that, you know, literally treats women like a pre-existing condition. And, and the Women's March, which was the largest demonstration in U.S. history. And the media is still so far behind in creating visibility for women and letting them be, I think, the star of their own narrative. So often, right, it's, it's framed in how are other men doing compared to this woman or um, you know is she keeping up with the boys and you know I think uh, hopefully the more women that run and the more women of all beliefs and you know they could be conservative liberal it doesn't matter we need to see that women aren't monolithic and that we really do have um, you know our own path forward individually Absolutely. And speaking of the most recent election, are we seeing more women coming into politics, running for local government? So here's the great news. Uh, <laughs> Emily's List usually has about 900 to 1,000 women who uh, express interest, sign up for their programs, say they're interested in running for office. Um, this year so far, and it's only May, they have 11,000 women who are interested in running across the country. Wow. Emerge America. Uh, we have 11 or 12 states that we're in. That's going to double this year. Um, so we're going to not only have the interest, but the infrastructure to help women run starting very soon. Wow. What, what's the next? What's like? <laughs> what's like? I'm so sort of out of it right now. But like, so we're kind of in an off cycle right now. But what is the next? Um, there's like some big. Um, there's a city council election coming up or no? What what am I missing out on? Yes, right right here in Burlington, okay. um, there's a Ward 7 special election for a okay. city councilor who's stepping down. Um, there was a woman who ran in the Democratic primary. It was a caucus, so 100 people came out one night to pick the Democratic candidate. And there was a woman who ran who came to the Emerge event and was inspired. And she was a great candidate, you know, got up there. It was her first time sort of breaking into politics. Lorraine Carter Lovejoy. And that was great to see that Emerge is inspiring people whether or not they cross the finish line. Uh, the man who is our Democratic nominee now, Ali Dang, would be the first new American of African 
African origin to serve on the city council if he wins. So, you know, it's whether it's women or people who are just underrepresented in a right. lot of different ways, it's exciting to see so many people say, you know, we need a change and I am the one I've been waiting for. I can't look behind my shoulder for somebody else to come along. Yeah, that's great. That's awesome to see that, you know, if it's not going to be a female uh, representing that seat, that potentially it could be a new American. That'd be amazing. Right. Young person. I yeah. mean, you name it. There, I mean, we saw the picture of Donald Trump with those interchangeable white men behind him after that health care vote. Um, and that was so distressing for so many people. I think they're finally s realizing they're not represented in government unless they stick their neck out and, and put a stake in the ground for what representative democracy should look like. Well, that's something that the Drag Queen League of Voters would definitely be down <laughs> for. <laughs> um, Standing up. Is that what's next? We're going to get a Drag Queen in the house? or? You know, that would be incredible. I was just going to say, I mean, <laughs> you're the next generation, so we need you to step up and lead and be visible. Um, I, my uh, legislative seat has um, gone to Brian Chena, um, oh, yeah. who, DJ. Yeah, who, you know, <laughs> asked me when he was starting, do you think it's okay if I wear heels and scarves sometimes to the state house? And I said, you know, it doesn't matter if it's okay. I started wearing saris and Indian clothing to the state house, whether or not it was okay with anybody. And even those small symbolic changes make a huge difference. Um, but I've been really heartened to see more queen visibility around the country, reading to kids, taking over public spaces, um, having shows like this. So I would hope and believe the next step is for one of you or both of you to run for office. <laughs> well, I've been there and done Not that. Sure. <laughs> but um, I was speaking to Brenda Keith at the Pride Center Gala, and they were talking about how they're organizing a, a, a drag, drag queen, queen at, at the, the State, State House Day. Do you Yay. know anything about this? <gasps> I feel excluded. <laughs> I want to be there. Yeah, she's um, she's working on it. I don't know. It's going to be next session, I think. But oh, um, yeah, it's just going to be. We don't have a date, but we, we do have a booking. <laughs> <laughs> that's what's important. Yes, that's um, all about that coin girl. <laughs> but yeah, so that's exciting that um, she wants to just have you know um, really a, di a diverse representation at the state house that day, obviously, but. Uh, for there to be loads of drag queens. So I think that's a lot of people will You'll welcome you with, with open arms. I would love to come with, and they'll, it'll make a few people uncomfortable, and that's a really <laughs> oh, good thing. I love that. That's I do my that favorite so well. thing to do. Yes. So. <laughs> um, so let's put the focus on you. You are our guest on the first episode. Oh, thank so you. growing up, I mean, you always, it seems like you had this leadership goal growing <laughs> up. So young Keisha, what did you want to be when you were growing up? Oh, wow. Well, um, you know, I just, it, it's, it's Teacher Appreciation Day, or at least it's the anniversary of last year's Teacher Appreciation Day. So my first grade teacher just wrote to me on Facebook, and it was a really beautiful reminder of, I think, where I got my start, really speaking up. Um, my grandmother, who uh, came to the United States from India, taught me how to read and write at a very young age. So I could write in cursive and take dictation from the age of three on. And so when I got to first grade, uh, I was a bit precocious and I was also uh, troubled. We, I had come from a really difficult past. My parents hadn't had a good relationship. My father was abusive and they were starting to split up. So, you know, I was a smart kid but had a really broken uh, home life. And my uh, first grade teacher, Miss Donahoe, was a very no-nonsense Irish woman. And um, she would teach us Irish jigs and I got a little bit more interested in school because I could sing and do whatever I wanted. And um, then she realized that even though I was a troubled kid, I could read and I could write pretty well. And there were a lot of kids in the class who came from other countries, um, especially from Mexico, who were really struggling. And so she said, you know, you have a great responsibility with this privilege that you have of, of language to take those other kids outside and teach them how to read. So, uh, you know, instead of having me just sit in the class and be disruptive, she had me take all those kids one by one outside and teach them how to read, which allowed me to walk a mile in their shoes and understand that many of them spoke multiple other languages that they had so much to offer and that those simple barriers often kept people from knowing and understanding who they were. And so it ultimately made me a better person uh, that she gave me that opportunity. And so I think about that when I think of, of all the people, all the Vermonters and Americans and people 
people uh, in general who can make a huge difference in somebody's life just by um, seeing a gift or a talent they have and, and helping them access it themselves, believe in, believing in someone else before they believe in themselves. I've had a lot of those people in my life and so I try to turn around and do that for others. So I was expecting, like, I wanted to be a doctor, or, <laughs> but I love the motivation of just a bigger goal of yeah. being an awesome human being. That's all we can ever hope to be, right? Yeah. Or a queen. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Well, right. Exactly. I tried that. And it <laughs> didn't... You did? Well, yeah. So, <laughs> dressing as Belle from Beauty and the Beast on uh, Moji's last show. Yeah. And, uh, it, was, it was lovely, but I'm really terrible at fake eyelashes. So so I think I'm just going to stick to Although they look me. amazing on you, <laughs> I have to say. Um, so you're off to Cambridge this summer. I'm off to Cambridge, yeah. yes. So what are you up to there? Uh, I am finally, after eight years in the legislature, my entire 20s spent in the legislature, going to take a break and go get a master's degree in public administration from the Kennedy School of Government. Um, and it's just an incredible opportunity, especially while all of the Obama team and a lot of people from Washington are creating a mass exodus from Washington and going <laughs> back to academia. Uh, so UN Ambassador Samantha Power will be a professor, Chief Economic Advisor Jason Furman, even UN Secretary Ban Ki-moon uh, will be there teaching. So it'll just be a really exciting time to be with people from around the world, really. And we know today, um, we uh, the moderate candidate in France, Macron, was elected president. So um, you know we can we can all rest a little bit easy that France didn't follow in the U.S. and, and the U.K.'s footsteps. But um, you know we have uh, a lot of work to do to think about the direction not only of our state and our nation but our entire globe and uh, world order. So it's a tall order, but I hope to get to the Kennedy School and be able to find some answers and bring them back to Vermont. Is that a is that a one year program or two? What, just one year. So then you'll be back to Vermont. I will be back to okay, Vermont. Good. Yeah. <laughs> With m master plans yes, of action, exactly. I'm sure. Right? <laughs> so are you going to share these master plans or are these a secret that we have to... Or are they going to probably develop, I'm guessing, right? You I know, mean... my biggest focus and hopefully everybody's focus is let's just save the country. Let's <laughs> Let's make sure that we're all here in a year and we're represented and we're heard um, and we have a country to save at all. So that's what I'm focused on. Awesome. <laughs> well, I think that is it on time. That is awesome. <laughs> well, we are so happy that we had you today. Yes. Oh, thank uh, this you. Is amazing. Thank this you for my your honor. inspiring words and just all around bubbly personality. Thank you for having me. I just had to keep up with the two of you. <laughs> <laughs> flattery, flattery. <Yeah. laughs> we need to cut the camera because we need to get into this. Right yeah. now. <laughs> and that plush is popping through right now. Awesome. awesome. Well, thanks, Keisha. And thank um, thanks for tuning in to the tea. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yay. Yay. Um, be sure to tune in next week. We have a slew of wonderful guests, including Annie Russell, Mecca, and the House of LeMay. Woo! More drag queens. Woo! Um, <laughs> give us some feedback as well. Yes. So we would love to hear from you. Our email is nightpainofficial at gmail.com. Send your comments, your requests. We'd love to hear from the fans. And yeah. All right. See you next week, Tuesdays at 7 p.m. on Bcam. Bye. Bye.